Okay, so I'm still playing around with the 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS and really liking the performance of it. I probably should put it on an SSD, but I've still got it on this USB drive at the moment. But uh, I've plugged in my physical hard drive because I've had a couple of questions. So let's switch over to screen capture. So one of the questions I had was about torrent files and it was on this video it came up. So if I do control F and type torrent, there we go, and return. Uh, Ace Tech Lab, can you please make a video on how to use torrent files? So first thing is to install a torrent program. And for that, I do sudo apt install transmission. And this works on this 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS and works on loads of other systems as well. So just hit return and uh, it will install. I've already got it installed, so you can see it's not been upgraded or updated or anything like that. Once it's installed, it should show up here. Uh, if it doesn't, you can always do a restart and it will show up. Uh, so that's transmission and you don't need to do anything once it's installed uh, if you download a torrent file and then try and open it it will automatically open that so another question I had which kind of helps with this uh, was on this one so control F and it was about Kali Linux and USB boot please do a video on Kali Linux USB boot Pi 4 400 so uh, let's have a look at that. So I did a search for Kali Linux and uh, you can see there's a downloads option here. I haven't tried it with USB boot because the last time I tried it, in fact, let's try this, APSP video Kali. I think I've always done it with Berry boot before. I haven't done it as a uh, Kali Linux, Kali Linux and then SSD. So the first one I did with SSD was uh, nine months ago and that was with Berry Boot, so a multi-boot installation. So let's try and do it as a normal installation. So let's go back to this one. And we're looking for 64-bit ARM installer, I'm guessing. Oh, no, that's Apple M1. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so Kali ARM images. That takes us to this page and there's Raspberry Pi and as you can see here it's uh, so version 2021.1 and it's available for the Pi 2, 3 and 4 and look it's a torrent file. You might find that this uh, is an ordinary download file. Sometimes download files are quicker, sometimes torrent files are quicker. I usually use torrent files when it's very large files which I'll show in a minute. So if I click on this one it's only 2.1 gig and you can see that it downloads a tiny little file. So we do show in folder, there you go. Now if I double click that, usually what it will do is open up transmission. Yeah, here we go. So you, transmission is a file sharing program. When you run a torrent, its data will be made available to others by means of upload. Any content you share is your sole responsibility. So I agree. And just hit open. And that's it, that will start to download. Sometimes things take ages and ages, other times they're really quick. So it depends on how many people are sharing that file at the time. Once it's finished downloading, you'll then be sharing that file. Or in fact, while it's downloading, you're sharing that file with others as well. That's kind of how it works. Um, but it works really well because you're getting multiple systems and it tends to speed things up. So 2.1 gig in 11 minutes, I think is pretty good. If it sticks to that, 10 minutes, it's getting quicker. So whilst it's doing that, let's close this bit down. I can minimize this and I can close down that Kali the next page. I don't know if it works with USB boot yet because I haven't tried it, but I figured I'd just put it on a USB stick or, a, or an SSD and just see if it works anyway. So another place where uh, a lot of torrent files exist is Arcade Punks. And uh, say I was going to download uh, an image from Arcade Punks and uh, I've been wanting to try out Batacera for a while. Uh, I've done it before, but I haven't tried it for a while, and I, and I haven't tried any proper builds on it. So let's go for front-end downloads, Pi 4 images. Now this will be the reason that I've got it on a bigger drive, and I'm going to need to make sure I save it in the right place. Well, let's see what happens with that. So uh, if I do newest first, but I'm not going to go for a massive image. I did have a look earlier on and there was a 128 gig image. So there's recall box there, which is decent as well. In fact, I could do control F again, couldn't I? And start typing Batacera, right. So that's 256, so that's 
bigger than I want because I've got a 128 micro SD card I want to use. So there's a 32 gig one there and there's 128 gig there. So let's have a look at it. So as you'd expect, various different systems on there. Yeah, so that looks pretty decent. So let's go back and click on the torrent. And the same thing will happen. So you can see torrent comes there. It's a small file that it's downloaded. There we go, Batisera. So I can double click that and that will start. But I want to save it somewhere else. So I'm going to save it on my uh, physical drive. So the first one I was saving on the USB sticks is only two gig, but this is uh, is 128 gig, so it's going to take a while. So I'm going to do destination uh, Seagate, which is the physical drive that I've got. I'll just save it on the root of the Seagate, which is which is basically the the first level that you get in on. So when you open up the hard drive, you'll just see it there, not in a folder or anything else. Uh, and so let's go open on that. So let's close this one down. You can delete these two, uh, which these two torrent files first of all. That's going to be the Kali Linux that's downloading. That's the the full program. These are the two files that tell the torrent program where to go. Right. So let's close that. Go back to transmission, and you can see there's only three or four minutes left. So I'm going to write this to this micro SD card, uh, but I'm going to boot it up in this USB SD card reader to test if it's USB. If it isn't USB, then I can always use it as an SD card build. So let's pop that in the Pi. So I've got this little SD card extender. Um, I don't really want to plug something else USB in while I've already got loads of other things doing. Uh, I think it's probably a bit too much power from the Pi physical hard drive running from a USB stick. But I figure it will write Kali. Let's try it. So after you pop the SD card in, this message pops up. You can close that down. And uh, I can have a look in the downloads folder if I want to see what's in there. So go to downloads. You can see this folder here. Uh, and it's going to be this file, the one ending in XZ. There you go. Image. If I hover over it, image.xz. So let's open up Raspberry Pi Imager. Choose OS. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and hit custom. Uh, you can see it's gone to the downloads folder already. Uh, so it'll need to open that and it finds this file. If I click on that, you can see that it recognizes it. And down the bottom, it shows you what types of images it writes. Image, zip, ISO, GZ and XZ. This is an XZ. Let's hit open. Choose storage. Obviously, I don't want to write to the uh, physical drive that's plugged in, the four terabyte physical drive. So I'll, I'll write it to this 16 gig drive and hit write. And yes. Pop your password in, which I think I put as pi on this one. I was messing about with uh, this works perfectly well with the remote desktop uh, that I was using in my other video, my one of my previous videos. Uh, it works really well. Okay, so all finished. So I can eject the card from the SD card reader, and I'm going to pop it in the USB. So basically, I want to use that as USB boot. Let's plug it in one of these. This is a this is a four gig pi. Pop that in there. Pop the power in, and I'm just going to use one of these USB sockets. It's not ideal, but it's fine. And I'm going to need keyboard, although I don't want to really unplug. Oh, let's give it a try while it's downloading. So pop that in there. I want to need HDMI as well. So is it going to boot? So requires newer software. So it's not USB boot compatible straight off. That's unusual actually. Uh, I'm going to try my really old method of the uh, 12 files to see if I can get it to work with that. Okay, so let's address this not working. Uh, I can unplug this for now because it's not, it's not accessing the media. And I'm going to boot from just an ordinary Raspberry Pi OS SD card. So let's pop that one in. And no, not switch that off because the other one's downloading. Pop that in there. There you go. So that's booted up. So now I can plug in this USB stick uh, with the SD card in it. And I'll switch back over to screen capture. Okay, so let's close these down. I need to look on my NAS drive because I've got 14 USB boot files uh, from a much older video. So uh, go network, my cloud. And I'm looking for a folder called all pi. 
and I've got various things in here that I can use on all systems. So uh, down the bottom here, USB boot 14 files is a zip file, so I'm going to copy that onto the desktop and paste. And I'm going to right click and extract to and select the desktop and open. So these files need to be put into the boot partition, so let's open that up. And control A to select all, and copy that into the boot file. And you can see it's the boot file is the SD card because it's the one that says eject on it. So obviously you don't want to copy the boot file that you've got. Uh, apply to all and overwrite. Okay, that should be it. Okay, so take out the micro SD and we're going to boot it up from the SD card that I wrote Linux to, but we're still using it as USB boot because it's in this SD card reader. So unplug and plug in. So the blue lights come on. Good start. Oh, it looks like it's doing it. Seems to be taking its time, but I'm going to leave it for a bit, see if it sorts itself out. Sometimes first boots do take a long time. Okay, so it's been stuck on this for ages. Um, I've still got a flashing light, but I'm just going to switch it off and I'm going to reboot it as an SD card and see if that works. But the damage may already be done, so uh, let's see how it goes. So pop that SD card in there. So I'm just going to boot the Kali Linux from the SD card. Pop the USB power in. There you go, that started up. I can't remember what the password is. I think it's probably root and Kali. So let's try Kali and Kali. Yeah, Kali and Kali. So that's booted up. Nice desktop. Uh, let's shut it down and then try and restart it inside this SD card reader. So see if USB boot is enabled now that it's done a proper boot from the SD card. So let's shut it down. Remove the SD card, pop it into the reader, and then pop the reader into the USB 3 socket on the front of the Pi. And let's power down and power up again. So I think it's done the same thing. So the SDA attached SCSI uh, removable disk, I'm pretty sure that's where it got stuck before. So it looks like it doesn't like USB boot using this 14 files method. So there may be another method uh, on, I did a video on uh, USB boot various systems and in the comments, lots of people have put solutions. Yeah, I've just looked in my uh, video from ages ago now, uh, USB boot current list of working operating systems and uh, Kali Linux never got added to it. So it looks like it doesn't support USB boot. So I haven't been able to get it to work with USB, um, but I did find this. So if I go into terminal and uh, I tried Raspi config and uh, it doesn't seem to have Raspi config, which not all systems do, but I can get in the boot config.txt. So sudo nano boot config.txt and uh, I can so I can do things like disable the overscan to get rid of that horrible black border around the screen. Um, but uh, right at the bottom, we have USB mass storage boot is available on Raspberry Pi 2B, one version 1.2, 3A, 3B, and 3 something else. Uh, so it has got an option here. So I'm wondering if I get rid of this, see what happens. Uh, it doesn't say Pi 4. Uh, so I don't know if this is going to work, but let's uh, let's quit out of that and see. Uh, so Control X and save that, and uh, and then let's do sudo reboot and have a look. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work. So I'm going to reboot with the SD card. Yeah, and it boots up straight away, totally different from an SD card. It doesn't do anything the same as it does on a USB stick. So it it stops really soon. But that kind of makes sense. Uh, the other Pis have a completely different way of booting from USB. That's why the Pi 4 took so long to get USB boot uh, because of how it stores the bootloader on the EEPROM. 
but um, never mind. Okay, so unfortunately I can't get USB boot to work on this. Maybe it just isn't supported on the Pi 4. Maybe someone else has a, a method of getting it to work, but uh, I couldn't manage to get it to work. Uh, but it's also not a, I like Kali Linux, but it's not a system that I would use. All these extra tools are just things that I don't do. And uh, obviously if you do, and I know it's a very popular operating system, in the right hands it's a great operating system. Uh, but it's surprising they haven't done USB boot after all this time uh, when it's been made so long on the Pi. One of the things I really like about Kali Linux is the way it can make itself look like Windows 10 to be less conspicuous. Uh, and I cover this in some of my other videos. Uh, so usual applications. Under other, you have Kali undercover mode. And see what happens when I press the button. It switches everything to mimic Windows 10. So you can be doing all your sort of uh, vulnerability analysis, database assessment, password attacks, wireless attacks, reverse engineering. You can be doing all of this, but it looks like you're doing it in Windows 10. Anyway, I hope you like this. Hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.